Odds are you pick up a bottle of whiskey these days for a nice little pour in the evening. You look at that bottle and label. You look at the old decanters and you think about the old west. But then you start thinking, is this the same stuff today that they used to drink back then? We're going to check it out. American whiskey, especially bourbon, has been enjoying a renewed renaissance in the last few years. But have you read some of these reviews? I mean, hints of tobacco and leather mixed with stone fruit? Or a dry finish with chewability to the caramel toffee and oak? Really? Now I'm trying out a lot of these whiskeys, many for the first time, and letting you know what I think of them in plain English. These are whiskey reviews for the rest of us, all from the comfort of my whiskey den. Hey everyone, it's David coming to you today from my whiskey den here in Ohio. Hope you're having a good day. Hope you're having a good weekend. You know, we're going to do something a little different today. I want to talk to you about me and my wife. We enjoy watching westerns. In fact, every winter we make it a point to watch at least one of the Lonesome Dove movies. Usually the first one and one or two of the sequels. And recently we started watching some John Wayne Old West movies like El Dorado and McClintock. And we're watching them and you know these movies, these old westerns have scenes like this. Let's let's roll the videotape! Which isn't really a videotape. It's more like a video file on my computer and I don't know who I'm calling out to because I'm going to be editing those video clips into this video. So, anyway, let's watch this. You know how it is. You watch an old western movie and the stranger walks in the bar and the barkeep says, Oh, what'll it be, stranger? And the stranger just checks everyone out. You know he wants that whiskey. They all do. You know what he does? After he stares them all down, he, he just grabs that bottle of whiskey. And everyone starts running. How about in Westworld, old Yule Brenner, he sits down at the bar. Bartender just gives him the bottle of whiskey, and Yule Brenner starts taking them shots too. Of course, he can down him because he's an android. A robot in that movie, but... It just goes to show, a typical western, they just guzzle this stuff down like it's the finest, smoothest Kentucky bourbon. How about my favorite western, Back to the Future 3? Now how does the whiskey affect old Doc Brown? What are you doing? That's why you gotta come back with me. Where? Back to the future. Now Doc thinks about it, he doesn't want to drink. Right. That's but in the heat story. of the moment, he puts the whiskey down, Amen. packs it up. It takes a swig and look at what that whiskey does to old Doc Brown. Kerplunk! You know, we watch scenes like that and my wife, Trish, was like, David, would you like to try some of that old Frontier whiskey? I was like, would I want to try some of that old Frontier whiskey? I mean, is it the same stuff that we have today? What was whiskey like back then in the Old West? Well, I was doing a little research. What were they drinking back then? I mean, this is the cowboy stuff, not the rich landowner stuff. So, some popular whiskey nicknames from the area, era offer a glimpse. It says, Mountain Howitzer, Coffin Varnish, Chain Lightning, Strychnine, and Tangle Leg. I don't know about you, but I don't know if I want to try any of that stuff. But then again, cowboys never really had this reputation of eating highfalutin food or drinking highfalutin whiskey. Now, did they? I mean, what do you what do you see cowboys doing out on the range? They're sitting around a campfire eating beans, drinking whatever they could find. So, I don't know if I'd want to try that stuff. Of course, you know, talking about John Wayne, you know, him, he, his characters, like McClintock and, uh, and the rest, you know, the, the wealthy landowner, 
they would drink the fine Kentucky bourbon because they could afford it. What about the local saloon? Well, unless you were a cash-paying customer and you were on the saloon owner's good side, you know, he would pull out that, that special bottle from, from underneath the bar and pour you a little a shot of it or just, you know, you pay cash for the bottle, right? But the quality whiskey, you know, was probably diluted for the cowboys and for the, the credit-mongering, you know, obnoxious Buford Tannen type characters who didn't know any better. You know, you, you start getting something like let's say let's take this ten high, which if you saw my bottom shelf battle number two, I couldn't finish the little bit that I poured for myself. Last time I used this, it was to soak my ribs before I put them on the smoker. This stuff is it even says on the label bourbon whiskey with natural flavors. So back then you get bourbon, whiskey, or whatever, and they would cut it with with stuff. It, you know, you, you talk about watering it down. They added molasses, tobacco juice. What else? Prune juice, glycerin, and sulfuric acid. Vasto Holland with the sulfuric acid. What are you talking about? Check this out this video for old rattlesnake a recipe that they found for old rattlesnake whiskey now an article in true west magazine in may 2020 gave this recipe for a whiskey called old snakehead the ingredients were a gallon of alcohol and they didn't specify what alcohol it was one pound plug or black twist of tobacco for color one pound of black strap molasses for flavor one handful of red Spanish peppers for spice, five gallons of pure river water, and two rattlesnake heads per barrel. This gives it spirit. Then they said to drop in the horseshoe. If the shoe sinks, it ain't ready yet, but when it rises to the surface and floats, the whiskey is ready to drink. And there you have some typical Old West saloon whiskey. So there you go. Needless to say, Old Rattlesnake will not be featured here on this channel. I ain't making it. I ain't doing anything with that. But it goes to show you that the term whiskey was more of a designation than an actual product. It's kind of like you pick up a Kleenex. And, you know, you say Kleenex instead of tissue. Or even more so, you go to certain parts of the country... Uh, like down south, they'll call any carbonated flavored soda water um, Coke. That's a general designation. So, you know, whiskey, the term was fast and loose back then. And thank goodness we don't drink anything like that today. But, you know, that begs the question. Do we have anything today that is close to what they drank back in the Old West? Uh, whether it was kept behind the bar for special customers or, you know, McClintock drank it? Well, doing, doing the research, the general consensus is there are at least two whiskey brands that are close, if not almost exact, to what they drank back then. So the first one is, and you've seen these, I'm sure, at your liquor store, Old Grandad. <clears throat> um, this is 80 proof, uh, high rye mash bill bourbon. So there's that. And the other one is a rye, which is Old Overholt. And this one is uh, 86 proof, straight rye whiskey. And we are not going to taste those today because I want to do a little more research and do a first taste video on each of these and give you my impressions of each one. Of course, my impressions are probably going to be of the old granddad. Now, see here, Sonny, you don't want to be drinking too much of that stuff. And I do know old Overholt. Um... Mr. Overholt was Mennonite, and so he would probably have said something like, Ich hab un Oryk Shay Rye Whiskey for dich, 
und das ist really Arikshe und uh, du host enjoy this. So, yes, I speak Pennsylvania German. And since he was a Mennonite, that's what they speak. <laughs> so, in any event, I will try these both um, in upcoming videos or maybe one video. We'll do two tastes. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. So until next time, it's David coming to you from my whiskey den here in Ohio. And as always, not only do I hope you learned something, because I sure did about this whiskey, but as always, please, I hope that your next pour is your best pour. So until then, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Thanks again for visiting me here at my whiskey den. Please subscribe to my channel and we'll be enjoying our next visit together soon. Thanks again for watching.